I want to tell you about two school districts. This is a true story. These two school districts are both in the same state. In fact, they're in adjacent counties. In the first school district, the median family income is $176,000. Zero students qualify for the federal free and reduced lunch program. In the second school district, the median family income is $34,000. Over 95% of the students qualify. The wealthier school district receives $1,000 more per pupil in education funding from the state. We're talking about $7 million per year in less funding for the school and the poor community. And the education reformers will tell you that money doesn't matter. But a lower funded school will have larger class sizes, fewer field trips, lower paid teachers, older computers, fewer librarians, fewer nurses, fewer counselors, fewer electives, fewer extracurricular activities. But all we can afford to give you is standardized tests, and we can afford to fire your teachers, and we can afford to close your schools and privatize them. But justice, we can't afford that. Standardized tests are a poor substitute for justice. And accountability based on tests is a poor substitute for equitable treatment. I've always been astounded by the fact that the same politicians who vote to hold all of our schools accountable to the same test score targets, as though everything's equal. These are the same men and women who vote to fund our schools at vastly different dollar amounts. Educational malpractice doesn't happen in the classroom. The greatest educational malpractice in the United States happens in the state house, not the schoolhouse. If we truly cared about how our students end up, we would have shared accountability where everyone whose fingerprints are on these students of ours has to answer for the choices that they make.